All right, I'm going to go ahead and do this video. And so we're solving log base 4 of x plus 1 minus the log base 4 of x is equal to 2. So first of all, this is a logarithmic equation. And there's really two strategies that we have with logarithmic equations. We can get it in logarithmic form where we have the three parts, base, exponent, answer. And then we can switch forms. Or the other option is if we have log equals log, just basically one log on each side of the equation, and they have the same base, then we can set the inner parts equal. And so those are our two basic um, cases when we're solving logarithmic equations. In this case, um, or in really in either case, um, we have two logs on the left side. And so notice I've got the quotient rule here. We're going to use that quotient rule so that we can get ourselves to one log on the left. So let's go ahead and do that. It'll be the log base 4 of this number over this number here. So all we're doing is using our uh, quotient rule. And notice in our case, m is x plus 1 and n is x. And now that's going to be equal to 2. And so now we have the three parts of a logarithm. The 4 is the base, the exponent is 2, and the answer is x plus 1 over x. So I'm going to go ahead and write this in exponential form. So this is, again, this is the method where we switch forms. And that's one of our two major techniques for solving logarithmic equations. So it'll be 4 to the, actually, let me go back to red. Be 4 squared is equal to x plus 1 over x. Boy, I'm sloppy here. x plus 1 over x. All right, so of course, that's going to be 16 is equal to x plus 1 over x. And we're going to want to clear fractions here. So I need to multiply both sides by x. So I'm going to multiply by x on each side. And notice these guys are going to cancel. So we'll end up with 16x is equal to x plus 1. And then um, we're going to want to get x on one side only. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract x on both sides. Uh, let me change colors here. We'll subtract x on both sides. And we are going to end up with um, 15x is equal to 1. And so we'll divide both sides by 15, and we get 1 15th. Now, to make sure this is a good answer, um, if we plug x in to this equation, 1 15th, Let's see, 1 15th. The main thing to watch out for is that you don't take the log of 0 or a negative number. And you can see that's certainly not the case. Now, we can check this. You know what? I'm going to make some room for myself here. So hold on. I'm going to slide all this work over so I can check my work here. So let's go ahead and plug in that. I mean, this one's kind of a pain to check, but we'll do it be the log base 4 of 1 15th plus, let's just call this 15 15ths, minus the log base 4 of 1 15th. And we want to know if that's going to be 2. And um, let's see, that's the log base 4 of 16 fifteenths minus the log base 4 of 1 15th, and that's equal to 2. So you can see you got to know your logs pretty well here to check this. Notice this is the quotient rule, so this is the log base 4 of 16 fifteenths over 1 15th, and we want to know if that's equal to 2. Now, 
16 fifteenths divided by 1 fifteenth, we actually would multiply by the reciprocal when we do division by a fraction. So this would be 16 fifteenths times 15. And so you end up getting 16 here. So we have log base 4 of 16 equals 2. And you can see that that does work. Because if you uh, check it by changing it to exponential form, you can see 4 squared is 16. And so that is true. And so this is a good answer. And so that's that one. So the check part was almost as challenging as the solving part. So you know sometimes students just check to make sure you're not taking the log of a negative. As long as you're careful as you're doing your work, you're probably OK. But if you did check it, that's how you would do it. Let's move on to the next problem. So I just want to kind of offer some backdrop for this problem. So at this point, we should have already solved exponential equations like 2 to the x power equals 13. And in fact, um, I talked about the two main methods that we use for solving exponential equations. One is we switch forms. And so we could um, write this as the log. Let's see, our base here is 2 of 13 equals x. So we have this is exponential form. We changed it to logarithmic form. And then now we could use the change of base formula to solve for the, the left side there. It would be x equals the log of 13 over the log of 2. The, really, the common log, which means both of these are base 10. But you can put that into your calculator and get your answer. And I didn't do it. I guess I could do it real quick here. Let's see, log of 13 divide log of 2. And that is, if you round to three decimal places, that's actually 3.700. I'm just going to go ahead and say 3.7. So you could check this by doing um, 2 to the 3.7 power. And that should be about 13. Let me go ahead and do that. Wait a second, I did something wrong here. Oh, I used 3 instead of 2. 3.7. There we go. So it does equal about 13, and so we can check our answer there. Now, the other way to do this problem, although, again, I would normally teach this most basic method first, just switching forms and then we use the change of base formula. The other technique that we could use, though, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this, is to take the log of both sides, base 10. Oops, let me move this over. So log. All right, so we're taking the log of both sides. And then. Uh, we can use, actually, if you look on the left side, we have the log, it's a base 10 log of 2 to the x power. We can use the power rule. It's one of our three rules of exponents. Remember, it was um, the log base b of m to the p power is equal to p times the log base b of m. And so we can move this. Hold on a second. We can move this exponent here out front. So that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to end up with the log, whoops, x times the log of 2 is equal to the log of 13. It, it really, at this point, I don't have to put parentheses around the 2 and the 13, but I'll, I will at the end, so I might as well do it now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm trying to get x by itself, so I'll divide each side by, whoops, not by x, by log of 2. And so we end up with, notice these, now remember this log 2, this all goes together. We have that times x in the numerator. We can cancel the log base, or the logs, 
log, common log of 2 in the denominator and the numerator, we end up with x equals the log of 13 over the log of 2, which is exactly what we had over here. And so we get the same answer. Now, let's go to the problem that you asked about, this number 2 here. We can't, notice we have two different bases. It's not like the, the basic exponential function, um, which I did on the right, 2 to the x equals 13. There's two bases here, so we're going to need to do something different. This is a more complicated problem, but we can use that other technique where we take the log of each side, and I'm going to use base 10 because that's one of the ones on the calculator. Whoops. Uh, let's see, 3x to the 3. Okay, and so now we'll use the uh, power rule for logs. And we're going to move these x's out front, or these exponents out front. And so we're going to end up with x log of 6 is equal to x plus 3 times the log of 3. Now on the right, remember the log of 3 all goes together, and it's multiplied times this binomial x plus 3. You're going to have to distribute. So you end up with x log of 6 is equal to x log of 3 plus 3 log of 3. All right, so um, you can see we have two terms with x in them. We want to get those on the same side because we're going to end up factoring out a GCF of x. So we're going to have x log 6 minus x log of 3 equals 3 times the log of 3. So now we have, all I did was subtract x times the log of 3 on both sides. And so now um, I can factor out an x on the left. I get x times the log of 6 minus the log of 3. And that's equal to 3 times the log of 3. Finally, to get x by itself, we have x times this binomial here, log 6 minus log 3. So you're going to be able to cancel these guys. And of course, whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. And so you can see x is going to equal what this is equal to. So at this point, I would plug that into the, my calculator. So I've got 3 log of 3. Make sure you close out the parentheses around the 3. And then divide by, now here you want to use parentheses and then log 6 into parentheses for the 6 minus log 3. And you're going to want to put parentheses around the 3, but then you're also going to want to close out the parentheses in the denominator. So you'll have two parentheses there. And when you do that, I'm getting 4.755. Uh, now to check yourself, we've got 6 to the x is equal to 3 to the x plus 3. So 6... Uh, hold on a second here. 6 to the 4.755 power is equal to 3 to the 4.755 power, pl uh, well, plus 3 power. So if you take 6 to the 4.755 power, you get 5,013 and we'll just say 0.13. On the other side, if you take 3 to that power, 4, really it's going to be 7.755. You do get the same thing. Although actually it's coming out a little bit, let's see, I got 5,012.74. This is why sometimes you need, you know, I'm going to the 
three decimal places, it's sometimes better to go at least four. Um, our accuracy is a little bit off just because we uh, rounded. But it's close enough that I believe it's true. And so that's going to be it for number two. And you just picked probably the hardest problem for mo most students in this chapter, or at least in this uh, section. I hope that helps. Uh, that's it for this video.